Welcome to my talk. The topic is filtration and the example is face masks. So I will talk about the filtration performance and the optimization potential of face masks. This is joint work with my colleagues Andre Baumann, Simon Berger and Dennis Ho from Heilbronn University of Applied Sciences, as well as Media Zimian, Philipp Eichheimer and Lipping Chen from Mark to Market. For a long time, people have been investigating filtration processes and have been improving filter media and filter elements based on experiments only. Since a few decades, simulation is an additional powerful tool which helps to get additional insights, more in-depth insights into processes and which helps to consistently improve, optimize um, filter media properties and the properties of filter elements. Therefore, in this talk, we will have a look at the chances and challenges of filtration simulation. And using the example of face mask, we will show how to address these challenges, specifically how to bridge the scale from the micro scale to the loop scale and how to use simulation for filter media optimization. Let's have a look at the chances and challenges of filtration simulation. In the classical product development process, we start with designs and concepts from which we derive geometric models for improving filter media or filter elements. Then physical pro prototypes are built and experiments are carried through. Looking at the results of the experiments, the designs and concepts are adapted. Integrating simulation in the product development um, process allows for some in-depth process understanding and for an easy variation parameters. This allows to save time and costs in the product development process. But simulation is always an approximation of reality, so physical prototypes are still needed in addition for validation purposes. What is also a con to simulation in the um, view of some persons is uh, the fact that you have to pay license costs and that you need special hardware for carrying through simulations. Let's have a look at the challenges of filtration simulation. One major challenge is the scale dependence of the processes. When a droplet is captured by a fiber, the processes are governed on a molecular scale, governed by the forces between molecules. So this is how the contact angle and the surface tension um, come into play. Filtration specialists normally start their consideration on the micro scale where um, fibers and yeah, liquid and um, gas phase are considered as a continuum. On the micro scale, particles and fibers are resolved. Particles are typically uh, in the order of a few microns or in the side micron range and fibers typically have diameters of a few microns. So since these yeah, structures are so small, simulations are normally restricted to small domains, um, which are typically of a size of a few millimeters. When one wants to look at a whole filter element, normally one needs to upscale the processes and parameters work with porosity, permeability, and the saturations of the phases, and not resolve fibers and particles anymore. Sometimes the influence of a filter on the particle transport in a room is of interest. Then and we are on the so-called room scale, where processes take place on the scale of meters. This is of special interest if you think about HVAC systems or about mobile air purifiers in the room. How can we model these flow and transport processes? On the micro scale, one usually uses an Eulerian Lagrangian approach where mass and momentum conservation equations are formulated for the gas phase and particles are tracked on the flow field based on forces such as buoyancy, drag and diffusion force. Based on the distance of the particles from the fibers, Particles may be captured due to inertia, interception, and diffusion. Sometimes, in addition, electrostatic effects play a role. What I have not shown here is the next interim scale, so to say, 
where droplets will touch each other and coalescence will play a major role. This can be described, for example, by volume of fluid simulations or by some clever kind of approaches. Philip Eichheimer will talk in the next talk about this topic. Once the liquid phase becomes mobile, one has arrived at the macro scale, where typically an Eulerian, Eulerian approach is used. Mass conservation equations are solved for both phases and the extended Darcy's law is used as momentum balance equation. These equations are supplemented by closure relations. Capillary pressure is equal to the distance of phase pressures and the saturations sum up to one. On the room scale, one typically uses again an Eulerian Lagrangian approach like on the macro scale, but the difference is typically that thermal processes play a role on the room scale. For example, there are electrical devices in the room, persons in the room. So normally, in addition to mass and momentum conservation, energy conservation is, um, yeah, is um, simulated on the room scale. So we've seen that there are quite a lot of challenges on the different scales. On the micro scale, one needs to get a good approximation of the 3D structure of the fibrous porous medium. Then it is a big challenge to model coalescence on the micro scale. If the droplets which were captured can get into the, to the flow again, one needs to model re-entrainment. And then when bridging the scale to the macro scale, it is important to have a idea about how large the appropriate averaging volume, the so-called RE is. The macro scale fluid properties are sometimes quite tricky. In real life fluids, uh, you may have multi-component liquids where the different components um, evaporate due to different vapor pressures at different points of time, or particles may be in the liquid phase as well. Then a big challenge is to model drainage on a macro scale. And if you think about the room scale, it is not so clear what happens when a particle touches a boundary. Also, if you think about virus latent aerosols, evaporation and condensation processes, depending on temperature and relative humidity, are um, an important effect. So what we'll do in the next part is to have a look at one example, face masks as a filter. And we will have a look at how we can bridge scales from micro scale over micro scale to room scale and how we can use simulation for filter media optimization. So let's have a look at how we can bridge scales. One may get infected with virus latent aerosols either when one is in direct contact with an infected person. This is what we call the um, direct route of infection, which happens at short distances, but on the other hand, infections may also occur indirectly in indoor environments where the aerosol particle concentration increases over time depending on, for example, the room volume and the activity of the person. Masks help both when worn by the infected person and by the potential host, and they help both against the direct route and the indirect route of infection. In the framework of a BMBF funded project, we see my colleague Simon Berger has designed and built a mask test bench, which we use for validation purposes, where air containing aerosol particles is sucked through the test bench using a ventilator. Um, aerosols are generated using the PALAS um, PRG 2000. And yeah. The particle size spectrum is measured upstream and downstream of our measurement box using the PROMO 3000 with the matching VENA sensors. Net pressure drop is also measured across the, across the um, test box. And in the test box, we can put an additively manufactured standard head both in third party protection mode and in self protection mode. Besides using Aerosols, which are defined by the EN149, we also use biogenic aerosols such as artificial saliva. And Simon Berger has shown this the particle size spectrum of artificial saliva to be in very close agreement to the exhaled particle size spectrum. 
So let's have a look at how we can bridge scales. We start with taking a sample of a mask filter medium, putting it in the, into the micro CT and generate 2D slices from this micro CT. And using Geodict, we generate a 3D geometry from a stack of 2D slices and we perform micro scale simulations on this 3D geometry. The green particles correspond the, to the exhaled particle size spectrum and we describe um, particle capture due to impaction, interception and diffusion. From the micro scale simulations we get the net pressure loss, the filtration efficiency and the parameters needed for the macro scale simulations which is porosity and permeability. Before moving on to the macro scale we first validate our micro scale simulations since we um, describe the mechanical capture mechanisms only, um, we put the mask or treated it by isopropanol for 24 hours in order to discharge it. And when we did this, the fractional filtration efficiency was an excellent agreement to the simulation results, as you can see in this curve here. So, Let's move on to the macro scale and in the first step we wanted to validate the macro scale simulation model as well. We did this by having a look at pressure drop accounting for the shape of the mask. So we used porosity and permeability from the micro scale simulations and determined pressure drop both experimentally and by simulation and you can see that the um, match between experiment and simulation is quite good. So we were confident to move on to the room scale where we were interested in where the particles would move to in the room and what the fate of the particle is. So we used fractional filtration efficiency, porosity and permeability determined in the micro scale simulations. We put a mask on our virtual test head and yeah, had a look at where the particles would move to. So we looked at a person standing in a room, a person breathing, speaking, or coughing, and a pe person wearing a mask and not wearing a mask. And we were interested in whether the particles would more go to the front of the person, behind the person, or to the side. We, in, due to time restrictions, we have a look at speaking as an example, and we have a look at the flow field first. You can see that without a mask on the right hand side, the flow just moves to the front. And when a mask is worn, be it perfectly fit to the face or naturally fit to the face, the flow is redirected to the back. And this is also what you can see when having a look at the particle fades. When not wearing a mask, many particles or most particles move to the front. Wearing a mask, the absolute number of particles is drastically reduced in all cases. When a mask is naturally fit to the face, many particles just yeah, end up on the body of the person itself. And what you can also see is that when wearing a mask, more particles move to the back than to the front of the person. What you can also see when looking at the, um, at the golden um, frame here is that um, particles move also to the top of the room, which is due to the fact that the exhaled particles are warmer than the ambient air. So let's on, move on to the final part, filter media optimization. We start again by a micro CT scan of a medical mask. And um, another input is a measured particle size spectrum at our test bench which corresponds to DEHS. The colleagues from Mark to Market generated a virtual twin from this 3D geometry of the mask and set up a base case in Geodict where uh, air was the gas phase and particle density corresponded to DEHS density. 
looking at the fractional filtration efficiency, the red dots in this curve um, are the um, values determined by geodict, and the green curve is the fractional filtration efficiency measured after putting the mask into isopropanol for 24 hours to discharge the mask completely. And again, we get an excellent agreement here for filtration efficiency. Looking at the pressure drop, the red dot corresponds to the geodict simulation and the green, blue and purple curves are the measured curves for the new mask and the discharged masks. We can see here a quite good agreement also for the pressure drop. Based on that, the colleagues from Mask to Market did parametric variations. They varied mean fiber diameter, solid volume fraction and media thickness, five to six um, variations per parameter and three realizations per design, leading to a total of 540 variations. Looking at one example of a result, we see how filtration efficiency looks like as a function of solid volume fraction and mean fiber diameter for a fixed filter medium thickness, and the same can be done for the pressure drop. Looking at all the different samples in the end, we see that in two samples we get really excellent results. It was possible to reduce um, the material, uh, the material use, so to reduce solid volume fraction, to reduce pressure drop, and to increase filtration efficiency at the same time. There was another quite interesting sample where the pressure drop could be reduced by more than 20%, the price was a slight decrease in filtration efficiency. So let me conclude. I've shown you how to carry through parameters across scales from the filter media scale to the filter element scale and the room scale. You don't have to do that in practice when you're doing simulations. You can also um, pick out a certain scale which is of interest for you, for example, the filter element scale and measure parameters such as porosity, permeability, or filtration efficiency. So we don't need to go the whole way here. We have seen that simulation is useful for saving time and costs in product development and to increase our process understanding by getting in-depth insights to the processes. Simulation is already a powerful tool in different filtration tasks, for example, for predicting filtration efficiency and pressure loss, and for describing particle transport in the far field of a fielder. Using face masks, we have shown how to bridge scales and how to generate additional value, especially if simulations and experiments go hand in hand. And we've seen that simulation using Geodict can be used for the optimization of filter media. Of course, many challenges are still remaining and will keep us busy for years and decades. This is um, especially related to the description of coalescence and drainage and of re-entrainment and dynamic processes infiltration. Yeah, now I'm at the end of my talk. I thank you very much for your attention and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.